Hi guys, in this video I'm going to talk about this monitor from OC, this is the G7 model, it's very similar to the T7 model, the only difference with that one is uh, the other one basically is cheaper and it doesn't have SDI connections, this one has 3G SGI and HDMI connection and this is well, I guess the, the sort of the big feature about this monitor is that it is one of the, the brightest, definitely the, the brightest monitor, on camera monitor that I've ever used. This monitor has got 3000 nits so you can definitely use it outside broad sunlight uh, so that's kind of a cool feature on it now the cool thing about it is that even though it's not a touch screen it's probably the easiest monitor that i've ever used uh, that allows you to quickly navigate through all the different settings and change your your different settings in the monitor and that's all thanks to this little joystick up here right with this joystick you can switch to the different custom scenes that you can set up uh, so you can, for example, have all your, you know, little, uh, basically, assists and all that stuff. And the software in this uh, monitor uh, gives you a lot of features, a lot of things that you can basically do and ways that you can monitor your, your video. So as you can see, um, right now here, just with this joystick, I can navigate. I have uh, two menus that I created. You can create a lot more than that. Uh, so, for example, menu number one. I can just enter it and I already kind of set up my own uh, different th things basically that I care about. Or these are basically different scenes that you can set up. So you can easily delete these, you can rearrange them, all that stuff. So my first sort of assist function is the aspect ratio. So I can turn that on and it will show me basically these bars. And I can of course enter it and I can change the aspect ratio. So as you can see I can have different bars. I can change this so that it's, uh, for example, lines. See these white lines are matte and then I can change the, the ratio on it. So different ways to basically help you assist in framing your, your shots. Another feature I like using is the false color. So again, you have that on there. And the false color in this monitor is actually really good because it's very, very accurate. It's got a lot more levels to it uh, and you can really in detail see how each part of your scene is exposed. Uh, you can also change, for example, the in the settings here, uh, what kind of a f false color basically you want to see for which cameras because you can have different presets for example for Sony uh, S-Log3 um, you can have airy log cameras different cameras that will basically show you the the log image at different basically uh, you know levels and because of that the, the f false color will actually adjust to that and, and allow you to get a proper exposure with all these different cameras that might be shooting in different log formats it's also got obviously a histogram, you can turn that on and off. Um, and by the way, you can, for example, change all of these displays. Uh, for example, like instead of having it in one spot, as you can see, you can also change it. So you can move it around to different parts of the, the basic monitor. So you can position it exactly where you want it to be. Uh, another thing that's really useful is the waveform. So again, you have that. And not only that, but with the waveform, as you can see, you can have uh, your Luma waveform. But you can also change it to RGB and also the parades, the RGB parades. So you can have the three separate channels on there. And again, you can change the size of it, location, all that stuff. So that's, that's a really cool and handy feature. It's even got a vector scope. And that's something that I wish every field monitor had. Because for me, I don't know about you guys, but I love using vector scope to make sure that I'm getting the perfect white balance uh, in my shots. So... Yeah, it's got it. And again, just like with all the other uh, basically features, you can change its location basically on the screen, its opacity even, and things like that. So it's, it's really handy to have. I also have my focus assist here tool. I can turn that on. And again, there's different settings for how you want it to be, whether you, what kind of color you want it to be, uh, the sensitivity, things like that. Uh, you can have a black and white background, or you can have a color one. Uh, again, however it is that you like to use uh, your focus assist, you can definitely set it up here to your liking. Uh, you also have peaking. And as you can see again, you have your intensity here adjustment for peaking. Now up here on my second scene, I've configured different things. Again, this is all fully customizable, so you guys can put in things that you personally care about. First thing I have is LUTs. Can enable that and that's because the monitor actually comes with uh, all these different LUTs built in but you can also load in your own LUTs by uh, inserting an SD card up here 
Now this set of the built-in LEDs that are in the camera are really cool because uh, they pretty much have different settings for all of the different cameras out there that might be shooting in log format. So whether it's Sony, Blackmagic, EC camera, all that stuff, you know, Canon, all of those different uh, cameras. So you can choose any of these LEDs and it's kind of cool to just sort of have it in there. So in case you just simply want to do a standard log to Rec. 709 conversion so you can see properly in a monitor you have it already in there but like i said you can also load in your own creative lats and you can use those as well i also enabled the audio meters in here because again sometimes i might want to be able to see what my audio levels are like and then the last this thing i have up here is my uh, is the scale so that you can actually reframe or change the size and then the location of uh, of your actual video signal which then will give you space basically on the sides for some of your uh, other let's say assist tools you could have for example put your waveform up here and your vector scope histogram things like that uh, so that they're not overlaying uh, on top of your image uh, this monitor has also different uh, anamorphic aspect ratios uh, up here in the main menu and they're basically pretty much all the different standard sizes that you want to have so you have the two times uh, then you have the 1.66x 1.5 1.33 you can even use a screen calibration tool uh, to fine tune and get the perfect colors on this and then load in your calibration lat on this monitor plus you have multiple settings that are already built into this monitor another thing i really like is you can turn on the, to see the actual voltage that's remaining on your battery that's powering the monitor now, like I said, the biggest feature of this monitor is the fact that it's the brightest monitor out there, at least the brightest that I've used. It's 3000 nits. What's cool about it is that, uh, again, if you're shooting outside in broad you know, sunlight, you definitely can use it without even a, a hood on, but it does come actually with a hood. Uh, the monitor doesn't really get that hot, and even with the brightness set all the way uh, at basically maximum, the, the set of the standard Sony NPF size battery uh, will last you around three hours but if you lower that by just a little bit uh, then it's gonna last you for many many hours like I usually use this around like five or six setting out of ten it goes to from a scale of, of one to ten so I said I usually use it around five to six I find that that's plenty of brightness and then the battery pretty much lasts you a whole day now what about latency you can see this is the sort of latency you're getting it's not the greatest it's not the worst uh, again it's sort of like my typical monitors uh, that i've used throughout the years uh, it's can be used for focus pulling now maybe if you're doing some really really fast action or something like that somewhere you know in those cases in rare cases i think it might give you problems but again most of the time it's plenty so you can use it for focus pulling now in terms of the inputs and outputs so you have your uh, HDMI in and out and then you have your SDI in and out uh, just keep in mind these are not cross convertible uh, but otherwise it is nice to uh, be able to basically loop out the signal uh, out of here uh, and then to power it you have a built-in Sony NPF style battery plate uh, and then you can also power it using uh, DC basically or AC uh, adapter that it comes with another cool thing actually is is that they give you a v-mount battery plate so you can actually uh, put it on top of here and then uh, you can power the monitor using v-mount batteries uh, the only other thing you have here on the back is your on and off switch it's like a actual physical switch which personally i like because i mean when you turn it off you know it's first of all not draining batteries like waiting for for you to click the button uh, but also it's just you know it's solid it's not something that you're going to accidentally turn it on and off uh, and then uh, on top here and on the bottom you have your quarter 20 attachments the monitor itself is made from a plastic it is a sturdy plastic uh, but i gotta tell you that the overall feel of the monitor like it doesn't flex or anything like that and that's supposedly because uh, the actual frame of this monitor is aluminum and those threads the quarter 20 threads on the top and bottom are actually directly attached to that aluminum so they're not something that are going to easily break off like in some of my other monitors that i've had where you know i had like a aluminum uh quarter 20 attachment but it was actually attached to the plastic body of the monitor and then the plastic itself would break well here it's actually attached physically to that uh, frame you do also have here on the side a uh, headphone jack and that's uh, so that you can monitor the sound coming uh, out of your video signal that's your inputting uh, so that's a great thing plus there is actually a built-in speaker so if you want to be able to 
you know, play the audio out loud for everybody to hear on set, you can do that too. So overall, as you can see, great monitor. I would say the only maybe thing that is, uh, it could be an issue for some people, not something really that I'm concerned with, is that uh, it, it can actually accept a lot of different signals, like I said, from SDI, 3G SDI, it has connections, plus HDMI and uh, different resolutions all the way up to 4K and HDMI. The only thing to be aware of is that in 4K, uh, the basically HDMI signal, the highest frame rate you can connect to this uh, is up to 30 frames per second. So if you are shooting um, 60 basically frames or 59.9 uh, 7, uh, then again, this monitor will not be able to accept that in 4K. In 1080, you can go up to uh, 60 frames per second. Oh, another thing you might notice is that as I rotate the monitor, you'll see the image flips. You can obviously turn that off, so if you want to have an, the image be upside down, you can do that, but uh, it's kind of cool that if, basically, let's say you wanted to mount it the other way around, then you can do that, and again, the image will always adjust correspondingly. Overall, I've been really happy with this monitor and with this brand. It's a new brand, relatively new. I've used this monitor for around six months now. And recently, actually, I have added, uh, I have a monitor basically here off camera that I'm using sort of as my in-studio monitor and also as my field monitor from the same company, OC, that I'm going to be doing a review of on that one. It's actually a fairly new monitor that I've had for just uh, basically almost a month now. Uh, now, I love using that bigger monitor. It's got a lot of cool features, but I find that this uh, sort of field monitor is, is in a way sort of like a shrunk version of that other big monitor that they, they offer. It's got really good, nice color reproduction, really bright again. Uh, I love that this little thumbstick that allows you to quickly customize all these different custom scenes or menus and then uh, be able to turn on and off and basically, you know, I, I be, find a quick way to monitor your image the way that you want to be able to monitor it. So I can definitely highly recommend it. If you guys are out there looking for a good field monitor, uh, check out the OC G7 or the T7, which is again identical, just doesn't have the 3G SDI connections if you don't care about it. And you can save yourself quite a bit. Well, actually, right now, I gotta let you guys know, at the time of me doing this video, uh, this the G7 with the, with the 3G I connections, um, Right, normally it retails for like $720, but right now you can get it for around $540, somewhere there, it's on sale. Uh, the T7, the cheaper model, is $420, $430, somewhere around there, uh, the price. Again, for all the latest prices and where you can get it. As always, check the links in the description of this video, and otherwise, uh, make sure you follow me on my website at tomantosfilms.com. Subscribe to my newsletter so you're in touch and you're up to date with any of future videos, tutorials, reviews, things like that. My name is Tom Antos and that's it for this one. Bye!